So we've noticed this trend in the comments section of our videos where people bring up the 100%ing Halo the Master Chief collection quest that Luke and I said we would do before Halo Infinite released about a year ago at this point. And it's been pretty interesting. Some of you guys have been very adamant to make sure that we do not forget that we have a deadline to get this game done by. And while some of you might have thought that we've just given up or that we've just forgotten about it, as it turns out, Lasso is just really hard. Back in July, we updated you on our Lasso experience, finishing off what had happened at the end of our Halo 2 Lasso, and our progress on Halo Combat Evolve Lasso, where we got stuck on the third level. At this point, the clock is ticking. Halo Infinite is set to release in the beginning of December, and that means Luke and I don't have that much time to actually finally 100% Halo the Master Chief Collection. Besides just the Lasso achievements we have left, there's other achievements we have to pick up along the way still, too. So now there's this extra pressure pushing in on this. So to answer the question, if we've given up on the lasso and 100% dream, the answer is absolutely not. We don't know how, and we don't even really know if it's possible at this point, but we are going to truck through non-stop and get every last achievement in Halo MCC before Halo Infinite's release. Or at least we're gonna try. But before we get into our intense Halo Combat Evolve Lasso experience, we want to tell you guys about Vite Ramen, who are the sponsor for this video. Eating healthy is pretty hard, and storing healthy food for a long time is even harder. Now with Vite Ramen, you don't have to worry about either of those things, since their ramen is made with healthy ingredients and delivers you the protein, nutrients, and fiber you need. So easy to eat healthy, it's almost like cheating. It only takes three minutes to make Vite Ramen, which makes it super convenient if you don't have the time to cook or you just don't feel like cooking complicated meals. They are also constantly in improving their lineup of products and just very recently launched their version 3.0 ramen. We actually got so much Vite Ramen sent by them and we are huge fans ourselves. It's actually super tasty and you feel healthy and full for hours afterwards. And to be completely honest, we couldn't be more thankful to sponsors like Vite Ramen since we've been running into some weird monetization issues with YouTube. But thanks to Vite Ramen, we're able to continue making videos for you guys like normally. And now when you order through our link, you get access to exclusive bundles that come with free chopsticks, a free hooked ramen spoon, and two high quality vinyl stickers on top of your Vite Ramen noodles. Also with code ROCKETSLOT, you can save an additional 10% at checkout, and it tells them that you guys came through us, which kind of makes us look good. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into CE Lasso. Okay, last time we talked about Lasso, we were stuck on Truth and Reconciliation, and just to recap the beginning of Combat Evolved, Pillar of Autumn wasn't actually all that hard, we just popped off some grunts and set off chain reactions, and we did push our way through that level, and Halo wasn't that hard once we realized that the order of the marines that we interact with does in fact matter. We just skipped the first firefight and walked the entire level. And then when we got to the marine rescue parts, we just took out the squads and saved the last squad where it had the least amount of covenant waves spawn in. We were able to clear that level. But when we got to truth and reconciliation, we ran into a really serious problem where there essentially is, besides the fact, not enough bullets throughout this entire level to easily clear this level. This level is just an absolute mess. There's this whole section with a force spawn area. There's these hunters where you're out of ammo that you have to fight. And then to tie it all off, there's this very incredibly difficult grenade jump that you have to pull off. And literally for the life of us, we could not get this grenade jump to work. And it was just after hours and hours and hours of trying truth and reconciliation multiple different times where we came to that realization that we were stuck there. We have a little bit of good news. I finally did in fact manage to pull that grenade jump off, but it wasn't the way that we had originally tried to do it. Essentially, on our next, next, next run of Truth and Reconciliation, after fighting our way through everything once again, the outdoor section, making our way up in the elevator, doing the spawning trick to try to make sure we had the enemies in an area where we could try to clear as many of them out and then use the rest of our snipers on the enemies, and then fighting off those hunters and pushing forward. The amount of times that we've done just that section was crazy enough. We did come up with a strategy where essentially we would push into the room and grab ammo and then try to clear out most of the enemies on the lower level that were constantly causing us problems when we were trying to do the grenade jump. When we were stuck in this area, for the life of me, I couldn't get the grenades lined up properly to do a double grenade launch 
up to the upper platform and it was just really frustrating because there were still enemies that were shooting at me taking my shields down and just making this whole part even more frustrating what we ended up doing was actually pushing forward a little bit and clearing out all of the enemies in the room we literally just fought our way through all of the waves taking out the enemies in the upper sections this section of the level actually gives you access to a little bit of ammo so you're not constantly out like you are in other parts of the level so while it did take some trial and error we were occasionally getting checkpoints and clearing the room out wasn't actually the hardest thing to do and probably the strategy we should have taken from the very beginning because even though we tried other things like head jumping and other ways of trying to launch my Spartan to the upper levels it ended up being really easy to time a grenade thrown at the same exact moment that Luke could throw his grenade and instead of me having to try to throw two grenades at the right angle and making sure they bounce right so they blow up at the same time we could easily coordinate this double explosion launch and I was able to get up to that upper platform. So that was a huge breakthrough. We had before that tried pushing through the level normally and it was just a mess. So we were pretty confident and happy with the fact that we were able to pull off the grenade launch, though timing it up in co-op significantly better than trying to do it by yourself. And we thought from there, the level would just be a walk in the park. Oh boy, were we wrong. We did definitely forget that once you push your way through the hallways at clearing out all the enemies that just explode everywhere, you eventually get to keys and then you have to escort keys out and there's some beefy elites that don't mess around keys also seems to be a danger magnet or something because just everything that light touches kills him we essentially got to the point where we noticed keys was just hanging around luke for whatever reason even though i was hosting and we ended up taking advantage of that because for whatever reason keys was triggered just to follow luke so instead it was my responsibility to try to push up and clear out the last enemies in the run back Back to where you would typically escape. There were a couple of rooms that were terrifying with just the elites or grunts exploding all over the place. But at this point, we were just so happy to be past the area that we'd been stuck in for so long. We were feeling really, really motivated and were able to push through some of these rooms that were incredibly difficult. Now there is a glitch that you can do if you kill certain Marines or something. It triggers the end of the level a little bit early and we didn't know exactly what it was that we had to do to trigger that glitch, but it looks like we had the the right amount of dead marines because we got the sequence where the level just ends here instead of having to run all the way through a couple more hallways to get to the outside area where you would escape from so we were really happy about that and sure enough truth and reconciliation was finally completed and we were so over the moon excited that we decided hey let's just go be silent cartographer real quick it can't be that hard right Right? Silent Cartographer is a very interesting beast of a level in itself. First of all, the good thing is you're not really limited to ammo in the same way you were in Truth and Reconciliation. There is ammo laying around. Also, you have a Magnum once again, which is just a god weapon in Lasso, which proves to be very useful here. And we do know a couple of shortcuts here and there that could possibly make this run a little bit easier. For instance, right away at the beach, we ran around the backside of the island, avoiding the whole fight going on there. There were a few chaotic moments when we finally did encounter some enemies for the most part we were feeling pretty good with the fact that the grunts explosions would just kind of take out a lot of the big enemies and of course when we got to the hunters one pistol shot to the back just takes it out so that's always something good to know and something we need to remember moving forward we quickly made our way inside the structure and ran down to the button that opens up the door in the other part of the level and then we got into a little interesting scenario where we had to decide what our strategy would be going in to the structure that takes us all the way down to where the cartographer is. Now, at first we thought, we'll just fight our way through. Easy peasy, nothing to worry about. That definitely was not the strategy. It did not work. We thought maybe we could fight our way with the warthog and take out some enemies. That wasn't really working either. So then we said, hey, let's just ram the warthog straight down there go into the tunnel, drive our way as far as it lets us and just see what happens. And of course, of all of the strategies, that was the one that got us the most success and made it so we could even get inside in the first place. From there, we know there's a ton of strategies people use online and we could have just gone and fought through the level normally, but we know you can technically survive this jump all the way from this platform down below if you hit it at just the right angle. So I decided to be the test dummy for this and started just throwing myself over the edge over and over and over again. It was kind of hilarious for a while, but eventually I started to get a feel for how the momentum shifted and how my Spartan hitting the geometry at a certain angle would kind of deflect some of my fall damage. And eventually I was able to make my way down safely 
by bouncing around without falling to my death, which saves a ton of headache having to fight your way down to the bottom. From there, I ran and hit the switch, which then teleported Luke down below, and all we had to do now was fight our way up to the top. And this is definitely by far the hardest part of Silent Cartographer. By far, the hardest and most difficult part of Silent Cartographer is this section on the way back up, where there's just a ton of jackals everywhere. These jackals just brutally destroy you in no time whatsoever, tied in with some hunters. And this is really difficult because for the first time, you're kind of faced off against a large number of jackals with shields. You don't have grunts you can rely on to just zap them all or have a big explosion that takes out a lot of jackals. And this room was a section I was stuck in by myself for a long time because Luke stayed behind with his shields and health being really low. Plus, when you have two characters running through, it does cause a lot of the time the enemies to shoot at the person in the back who's a little bit slower because they were alerted by the first person. And of course, with Iron Skull on, one person's dead, it automatically takes us both to the last checkpoint. Also at this point, ammo is very, very limited, and in general with Lasso, the later you get in the level, ammo becomes a little bit more difficult, especially with that foreign skull on, making it so you can only pick up UNSC weapons, and there's also a skull that makes you essentially burn through ammo twice as fast, so it's a little bit difficult up here. Essentially, it was just a trial and error game of me running different routes through these lower sections and figuring out how I could possibly survive as long as possible. Nothing was going to go on with those hunters right away. The jackals actually ended up being the biggest threat. And I think I ended up just getting a really lucky run where I ran through a grenade and just as I was about to die, ran on a health pack, which gave me enough time to throw a second grenade, which wiped out most of the jackals and made it where at least I could then shoot at the jackals and not just immediately get obliterated. And then from there, I could focus on the hunters and making my way up the ramp. But even after getting this section and fighting my way slowly but surely, on the fight up to the surface again, there was a lot of other issues along the way. There are a lot of enemies through this section when you're fighting your way up to the top, and of course, when you're almost at that door that you entered through, there's this sword elite who will hunt you down to the ends of the earth to make sure that you don't escape. Seriously, this dude caused me so many resets because he would just kill me in one swing. There were some awkward encounters where he wouldn't attack me for a second, and then he'd murder me, and and there were some times where I made a run for it and he chased me down and then murdered me. After a massive headache with this elite and I finally managed to get past it and I decided to take the warthog back up the hill partially as a way of escaping that elite, it teleported Luke back to me and gave us a checkpoint which was huge because now we just had this small stretch to go. But between where we were and where we have to go for the pelican to finally fly in and pick us up was a little bit of a stretch with a ton of enemies. And and this is where we thought we were geniuses with trying to use the warthog to escape the way that we entered. And we like the strategy, it on paper might seem the best, but some things didn't really go right. Like for instance, one of the times a random invisible elite just spawned inside of our warthog just kind of standing there, so that was a bit awkward. We then decided to just try to make this mad drive out of there and get that pelican to start flying in right away, and we drove the warthog out there, we saw the pelican, we were like, this is it, we finally not only got past Truth and Wreck, but we're finally even further along with Silent Cartographer, and the pelican crushed our warthog and killed us in the process. Sweet. Okay, so we were going to try it again. We drove up past the enemies doing the best that we could, and this time I was a little more careful to be wary of where I parked my warthog because I didn't want this pelican crushing us again because it's not fun. And fortunately enough, I parked it just right where Luke was able to jump out and jump into the pelican. And with the enemies following us from inside of the building, we definitely had to move quick. So I jumped out of the warthog and walked around to try to get into the pelican. And lo and behold, the warthog was blocking me from getting inside the pelican and it would just force me in the passenger seat of the warthog. So Luke was getting shot at by the Covenant and the only way I could get into the pelican would be if I walked back around and drove the warthog and reparked it again so I could get in the seat of the pelican to end the level, which I did end up managing to do all before Luke died. So that was kind of nice. This level was still challenging, but it definitely was no truth and reconciliation. But we definitely knew that things more than likely would only be getting more and more difficult from where we were at this point. Okay, when it came to assault on the control room, Luke had a strategy ready to go that ended up being a pretty valuable way to maneuver this level. Now, in general, we both were on the same page that 
as we know from speedrunning experience, if you can jump down from the cliff or jump off at this bridge section and not die, you can progress through the rest of the level without a single enemy loading. So we're on the same page that that was probably the best way to approach this level. Though there is a few issues when you get to this part. First of all, the first little section of Assault of the Control Room does have regular enemies you have to take out, and we were getting pretty destroyed in this big open space right after the pelican dropped us off. Though after we were a little used to it, we did manage to take out the enemies and we were better at planning our grenade throws out and actually throwing them the right distance this time around. But we essentially had to rely on two different strategies that we could potentially do that maybe would end up working for skipping a large portion of this level. Now, the strategy we did in speed running past was we jump off the map, we slide down the side of the cliff, and then we jump down again typically using a quick death and respawn to respawn a player mid-air that they don't fall from fall damage. But with Lasso on and the Iron Skull, this trick just ends up being impossible because you can't load a player in or respawn a player because if one player dies, the whole thing is reverted back to the last checkpoint. We've seen videos online of players who are able to solo or single-handedly jump all the way down and bank off of geometry and survive it. For the life of us, we spent a couple of hours just throwing ourselves over time and time again, and we never once were able just to survive the jump normally without using some sort of respawn trick. So with those options being limited, we referred to the Bible of Halo Lasso Runs, the Halo Completionist Guides Done by Silver. And this is where Luke's strategy came from, as in Halo Completionist Guide, Silver pulls off this glitch that causes the Banshee driver to leap out of the Banshee and leaves the Banshee in good shape. So essentially, Luke went on the mission of analyzing and copying exactly the direction and stance that Silver uses in his guide to make sure that the Banshee would fly over the right way and then quickly step backwards into this specific walking pattern he had to do so that the Banshee driver would jump out and Luke would be able to take the Banshee. Now it did take quite a bit of trial and error practicing to make sure that the Banshee would fly in the right way and that the movement lined up with the right timing for when you needed the Elite to be triggered to jump out. But sure enough, eventually Luke did manage to get this. And from there, I had the easiest lasso level I ever had to do as Luke just jumped in the Banshee and flew to the end of the level and we beat the level. Yeah, it was pretty much that straightforward from there. It was just some corridors he had to be careful at. And after he pushed his way all the way through, we were able to complete this level with no problem. And you know, that's great and all, but we hadn't even gotten to the point in Combat Evolved where we faced off with the Flood. And going up against the Flood on Guilty Spark would be a very unique shift for our lasso run, especially knowing that the Flood would play such a prominent role on upcoming levels like the Library or the Maw. Okay, first things first, we got to Guilty Spark. We were actually pretty impressed with how this level starting things off wasn't too bad. All in all, we were able to clear Guilty Spark in 36 minutes. It's a pretty straightforward level. Firstly, we started off being smart and watched Halo Completionist's guide as how he maneuvered through it. And the main thing is just knowing where you're supposed to go so you don't waste time getting lost in this level. And that kind of worked for us some of the time, except the parts where we still managed to get lost. Now I can say this in retrospect, that comparatively, this level is significantly easier than any of the other levels in Combat Evolved that have the Flood in it. Because when you first are introduced to the Flood, you just have these little infection forms which you can just punch, and you even get your shields back because of the Black Eye Skull. And there's a few moments where things might get a little fast-paced and chaotic when you have some of the faster forms and there's also some splody boys, but with the frequency of checkpoints and just in general, this is one of the shorter levels of Combat Evolved. It wasn't all that bad navigating our way through this, making our way back up, and it did at least give us the beginning of a feel for what it's going to be like fighting against the Flood. Now there was one section where we were supposed to take it a little bit slow and I just decided to YOLO myself across the bridge and make a run for it, which after a few tries I actually managed to do it. So we even saved a little bit of time there because it just teleported Luke when we got to the elevator. And then the only part that was a little bit tricky on the outdoor area was the last run towards the final structure where you run into Guilty Spark, where there is a lot of Flood that can just shoot at you and 
drain your health and kind of cut you off before you make it to the end. You just have to kind of be careful to make sure you navigate in the right way. And if you are getting attacked, you kind of kill something and just hope that the rest of the enemies didn't hear or react to it and just chase you down and murder you. But like we said, this level wasn't nearly as bad as anything we had experienced so far. So we're feeling pretty good about this. And matter of fact, we actually thought that maybe the flood would be a saving grace of the combat evolved lasso run just because they weren't that bad on this level. How bad could they possibly be on any of the other levels? And then we loaded up on the library. Awesome. So next we were going on to library and oh boy were we not at all prepared for this level. Not only does this level have the reputation of being one of the hardest levels, but we've faced difficulties on this level alone when we went and tried to do the legendary under three hours achievement. So jumping into this level, we kind of already had this intimidation factor before we even started. This level alone is easy to get lost on and it's incredibly difficult and then tying that with the extra factor of it being last so not something we're definitely looking forward to. So we ended up jumping in, going the study mode route ahead of time. We watched Halo Completionist's guide, and matter of fact, we even caught him live streaming a Lasso playthrough, which ended up being incredibly resourceful. With the library, there's two massive things to note here. The first floor has a pretty big skip, which ends up easing you into this level pretty nicely, and you 100% have to learn a trick called backpack reloading. We'll get more into the explanation of that in a second. In this first opening section, there's quite a few waves of enemies that are pretty aggressive that you actually don't have to face off against. And if you just do a couple of trick jumps to get over this wall, you can skip a large portion of the enemies here and stop a spawn of enemies later on in this first area, making the first floor about half as difficult as it already is. The only problem is Luke and I were running into problems finding a way to get both of us over the wall. So me thinking that I was brilliant and a great godly Halo player could just run ahead and carry this whole first floor by myself and then Luke would teleport to me. Quickly learned that this probably wasn't a viable option because I was very rapidly running out of ammo. So after spending maybe an hour by myself trying to clear this first floor, we decided we should probably regroup and come up with a different strategy that allows us both to get over to the other side. So a day later jumping back onto library, we ended up coming up with a new strategy where Luke would jump off of my Spartan's head, get to the upper platform, and then grenade jump himself over to the far side where I would then try to pull off two grenade jumps if I could and land over on the platform by Luke bypassing all of the enemies. Now the main thing you do have to know is you have to run a little bit forward before you do the trick and make sure you trigger that first loading zone and then after you do the trick you do have to hit another little loading zone on the side and kind of outrun the enemies and kill a couple of them but otherwise you have a huge skip that's incredibly useful. So at this point we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. We felt confident that we cleared one trick for the entire library so far. We had the rest of the whole level to go. And this level definitely does not mess around when it comes to the flood. They throw stuff at you and they throw a lot of things at you. We quickly learned we would have to memorize in pretty much every loading scenario whenever we would get a checkpoint where the enemies would end up spawning in from because sometimes the enemies will just spawn behind you and you have to be prepared and ready for literally anything. So we're definitely trying to learn that and pay attention. But also at this point, we're very limited on what weapons we have. You can get a shotgun a little bit early on which is incredibly useful if you have a shotgun but with these darn skulls every shot counts for two shotgun shells so you go through ammo very quickly and that's where backpack reloading is the go-to strategy that comes up here essentially there's a trick where if you have a weapon that you aren't already holding nearby if you go to reload your weapon and you double tap the reload button and then switch the weapon out if you do it all fast enough your weapon will reload without any of your bullet reserves being drained pick the gun up up again and boom you have a full mag. Now a big strategy that's used often especially lasso solo plays or just people playing through on legendary is they bring a, another weapon with them and juggle it along as they progress so they always have a third weapon to switch to when they're trying to do the reload trick. Now one thing Luke and I definitely had to learn the hard way is we had to be sure that if we didn't have the same exact weapon loadouts that we were being mindful of where the weapon that was being used for backpack reloading was because if 
If I had a shotgun and a magnum and I was carrying an assault rifle or juggling an assault rifle alongside me to use as a reload and Luke was just carrying an assault rifle and a magnum, if he walked over the assault rifle, he would pick up the ammo and the assault rifle would despawn, thus blocking me from doing any backpack reloads. To make this trick even more difficult though, is a lot of the time you're in desperate need of a reload and there's just enemies everywhere and you're not in a safe place to quickly pull off this trick, at least accurately. And I really, really struggled with getting this trick to work. I don't know if I'm just too slow at doing this triple tap type button press. So I definitely was struggling in itself, but Luke also couldn't really get a grasp on this trick either. So we definitely were running this at the lowest optimization where this trick was just above our typical skill level. Still, like we said, it's required for this level. So you're gonna have to learn it one way or another, or in this case, at least one of us had to learn it so that we could make some progress and have one person push forward. Fortunately, since I was the one who watched the live stream of Silver and as he kind of talked people through how to do the trick, I felt like I had a better understanding. So a lot of the times I was the designated reloader in some of these sections. Now, one big thing though, that we did learn from the live stream of Silver playing through Lasso is there is an alternate way to pull off the trick, which ended up being very, very reliable in my situation because I was struggling with that triple button press. But essentially, if you have no bullets left and your Spartan automatically goes to reload, if you quickly switch weapons right before any of the reload stuff actually takes place, in this case, a shotgun shell being put into the gun, it will continue the reload after you switch the gun out. You could pick it up, have the full clip and have all your reserve ammo, which is a really useful alternate way of doing this trick. It probably wasn't the best way or the best use of this trick, but since I was really struggling with the other one, this one ended up being a godsend to try to use. So a lot of the times I would just shoot my shotgun until I had to reload. Then I would switch to a different gun, run over to wherever my backpack reloaded gun was, switch back to my shotgun and before the whole reload animation started, quickly switch it the shotgun will reload, then I could pick it up and rinse and repeat taking out enemies. Obviously I had to back off and have a little safety bubble I could go to to try to pull off these reloads, but as you progress through the level and you have more and more ammo on reserve, it definitely became a more usable strategy the further along we got. Still, there were sections where I just could not get the trick to work or I just had to shoot to survive or reload to survive. And obviously it's probably not the optimized version of running this level, but you kind of have to just adapt as you go through it when you're learning a new trick. Another little nuanced thing about running the library is you definitely have to get good at aiming to punch the little flood infection forms because these will be your lifeline for getting your shields back up, but they also can be very deadly if you miss a couple of your punches, which ended up being so frustrating whenever we were doing good and we just needed to punch one enemy to get our shields up and we ended up dying to that one enemy. So as we progressed through this level, taking things very slow, kind of moving just checkpoint to checkpoint, not trying to run past anything because that really wasn't a strategy for this level that seemed like anything that could work. If anything, the further we would run ahead, the more we would hurt ourselves later on as enemies from behind us would either catch up and kind of destroy us. We just stuck together and pushed through the hallways slowly but surely making our way up to the upper floors. We do have to say flood with rocket launchers are absolutely terrifying, but if you can pick up a rocket launcher, you are in a little bit better shape, especially if you can pull off the backpack reload. The rocket launcher is one of the easier weapons to backpack reload with that second method that we ended up utilizing because in general, with the skulls enabled, one shot means you have to reload no matter what. So essentially I would shoot my shot, switch weapons, and then not pull my rocket launcher out again until I was ready to do the backpack reload. And essentially I was working with unlimited rocket launchers and the further along we got in the level, Occasionally I'd find another rocket launcher and I would get one or two more shots in reserve just in case I messed up the reload. And occasionally I did mess up the tricks for the backpack reload and I'd end up losing some reserve shots. So it was nice that there was a little bit of a buffer along the way. We continued pushing up through this level. It is very repetitive and a lot of the floors look the same so it is easy to get lost. These hallway sections are incredibly stressful and scary because you don't know if with the boom skull, the explosions are just gonna destroy you instantly if one of 
those flood carriers blow up. And then there was a few instances where we would get a checkpoint and we were a little more split up than we'd like, which could really cause for a big problem for a while. There was a section where Luke and I were in different parts of the level where Luke was a bit ahead. We got a checkpoint when I was a bit behind and a bunch of enemies spawned in between us. And I had to fight my way through a ton of enemies and it just became this method of trial and error and memorization where all the flood was and how to prepare for them where I was tossing grenades and just running to try to reunite with Luke. Then there was another part where Luke stayed behind a bit and more enemies spawned in and he had no shields or health and I had to push back to try to clear the area so Luke could move up in the level with me. Those parts were really challenging and sometimes we were stuck at a certain checkpoint for well over 20-30 minutes at times. This level by no means was a walk in the park. However, the whole way through it, we were still feeling positive that it was doable with how much progress we had made so far and even the road that we had ahead of us. We were never at a point like in Truth and Reconciliation where there's some obscure or specific RNG type loading sequence that you need to hit to make sure that the level works the way that is in your favor. This is just straightforward, play the game and do it well. So we continued pushing up using the rocket launcher sparingly, but using it enough where we definitely had it save our butts a couple of times. And eventually after about four and a half hours on this level, we did manage to make our way out of library and the games didn't even disconnect, crash and rip us apart when we were at the end, which was something we were a little bit grateful for. But then just when we thought we were out of the woods, two betrayals came up and this level is also also known for being one of the more challenging levels of combat evolved. Everyone says two betrayals in the library are up there with truth and reconciliation and from our experience two betrayals definitely was more challenging than the library for different reasons. Starting things off you're just being shot at by drones no cap they're just blasting you the second you have control of your spartan so if you're not moving right away you're in trouble. Now there's a lot of different ways to approach this the main thing that we felt worked the best was if we just threw our grenades and tried to manipulate where the drones were flying based on how they were triggered on us so that they would get damaged by the grenades. But once we killed two or three of them, we would jump out with our shotguns and try to take out the sentinels. Now, the rough part about this is there's a trick in a couple of checkpoints coming up where if we couldn't pull that trick off, we would have to restart the entire level and do this drone thing over and over and over again. This was incredibly frustrating for so many different reasons because sometimes the drones just acted differently and we would be stuck for a while trying to figure out what's going on. So after we clear the drones, you open up the big door and some some more RNG happens. Typically, there's supposed to be drones at the end of the hallway that fight the Covenant as they turn the corner, and you just sit back, watch, let them fight it out, and then clean up the enemies at the end. Though, we occasionally had runs where the drones were just sitting at the door, attacking us as soon as they pushed through, or they would fly from where they were and push at us. There was also a few times where one of the drones was stuck in the wall, which was just really bizarre. I don't know. It was just a weird experience on this level. Okay, essentially though, after clearing the drones and killing the covenant that's there, usually by throwing some grenades and hoping you get good checkpoints, you can push up to the door that opens up to the outside. Now there's a trick you can do which despawns all of the enemies in the level and we could not figure out for the life of us what we were doing wrong at first, but essentially if you hit the door switch and then you hit the door switch again, if you do it right, you'll only see jackals and elites on the other side of the door and no grunts, which then means that you've despawned all of the other enemies in the level so far, which makes it incredibly easy to get out of the structure and get over to where the banshees are to get ready for the next part of the level. The problem was nine times out of 10, we just couldn't get the door to work right and the grunts would be spawned there. We pressed it twice. We paused and waited like we were supposed to. We still didn't know what we were doing wrong. It was really frustrating because right when the door opened the wrong way and the grunts were there, it would trigger a checkpoint. Essentially, the checkpoint was the indicator in itself that we started using to know that we didn't do the door correctly because that would mean the grunts were there. On the times where we did manage to actually get the trick to work, we didn't get a checkpoint there. So that's how we could kind of know and tell if if we were doing the trick right. Eventually, we were getting a little bit better at getting the door timing right, where we pressed the door button, waited a second or two, and pressed it again just right, where no grunts spawned, and then we would get killed by the Covenant that are still out there, like the Jackals and the Elites, which would put us back to a checkpoint.
checkpoint before we hit the door, which was great. But if I messed up there, it would give us a checkpoint spawning in the grunts and we'd have to start the entire level over again, putting us in this vicious loop. When I was pressing the buttons, I started using the visual indicator when you press the button as a part of my mental timer as to when I should press the button a second time. And eventually I just got into a rhythm that worked where I would open the door and there would just be the elites and the jackals, no grunts, meaning that the rest of the enemies had not spawned in and of course no checkpoint. Then if Luke and I could manage to kill those elites and those jackals, things would be really smooth sailing for this first section of the level, which was in fact what we ended up going for. We did eventually manage to kill the covenant off here and then we could chill for a second. There was no enemies nearby. We could figure out what we're going to do and how to approach the next part of this level with a little bit of slower thinking, not thinking that we're about to get wrecked by a single grunt in the next 10 seconds. So we ran around, grabbed sniper ammo, and then we made our way down the hill where the banshee typically will spawn in. Now, usually there's two banshees here, but because of the despawn, there's only one banshee. So we used that banshee and flew back up to the top of the level while one player stood staying behind where the second banshee typically spawns in and the player in the banshee lands the banshee and presses that door button a third time which then activates all of the enemies to spawn in including the grunts and the elites and everything else in the area the second player has to quickly jump into a banshee and just fly for their dear life and if done correctly you're able to essentially get into the banshees without having any of the covenant traffic that would normally destroy you on your way down this actually worked out really well and we we're able to manage our way up to the top area where we shot at the enemies coming out from the inside and then we pushed our way indoors. When we're at the first tower that we had to activate, we did a pretty easy trick here where essentially one player runs in and it hits the light beam where the second player is in the hallway right by the loading point and runs back to trigger the loading point, teleporting the player out of the room onto the other player. And we were able to skip all the enemies that spawn in the hallway, rushing in to kill everyone. We felt like super pro gamers after that one, but the next part was a bit more difficult because we had just a ton of hallways that we had to go through and at first we kind of had to deal with the covenant which on its own is annoying with all the exploding grunts in these tight corridors and small areas and then basically there's a bunch of elites and jackals along with more grunts in the middle of a room and sometimes if we got some grenade throws right or we killed a grunt at the right time we could get some chain reactions going which did do damage against some of the enemies, but it seemed like there was always this one grunt at the door that just ruined our day repeatedly. And it was tied with the checkpoint where we would try to use this grunt right outside the door to get our shields up and then start a train reaction, but this grunt just never cooperated and always resulted in us maybe being worse off than we thought we were if we could actually just kill the grunt and get our shields back. This room was absolute chaos and there was times where Luke just took a break and I just practiced this room over and over and over again, just kind of getting used to fighting the Covenant in this type of scenario on Lasso. And oddly enough, while we've already beaten so many levels Halo CE Lassoed, this was the first time I felt like the combat was incredibly important and like little wires in my brain were starting to connect on how I could kind of predict or suspect or pay attention to how much health the elites had and when the right time to try to push them or how I should try to kill them. It's really weird to explain, but it was just like all of a sudden some of the combat that's expected in Lasso was coming together in my brain. And it took all the way until this level before it started happening. So after running this room over and over and over and over again, we did start to get into a flow where we were consistently clearing the room out. But the big problem we kept running into is there's these three jackals in the bottom of this little staircase. And and by the time we got to the ramp going down to where the jackals are, we were pretty low on ammo and these guys would just wreck us sometimes. And you don't get a checkpoint until after you kill these jackals. So there was a few times where we had to go all the way back just because of them. And we were stuck in this room for quite a long time before we finally were able to clear this overall thing and get a checkpoint. Then from there, we have this long hallway with a ton of enemies. And usually I'm completely out of ammo at this point, but because Luke and I were kind of balancing out who was going forward and pushing and clearing, and I did all the stuff clearing out the first room, Luke was able to utilize his weapons to kind of push a little bit in the second room and take out the enemies in this long hallway, setting off chain reactions with the grunts. We then pushed ahead and we got to the first outer bridge area, which was super exciting because bam, we made it this far. And we did learn from our speed running video that we can't jump across the bridge to try to save time. It messes up the loading. 
so we're gonna have to make our way across this bridge one way or another. While we were trying to figure out the best way to approach it and Luke was pulling up guides on how Silver makes his way across the bridge, I just decided to run for it and somehow I actually survived the whole way across. I just ran, I was getting shot at, I would punch an enemy, get my shields back and I just kept running and I was being chased by elites and I just kept going and going until I just made it into the area that loaded Luke over to me and we got a checkpoint and we're in pretty good shape. I don't know if that was supposed to happen, but somehow it did happen and that was pretty cool. So multiple hours in at this point, we made it to this room that is just absolutely filled with the most flood that we had seen in Combat Evolved so far. There's just enemies around every corner and this room, 100%, I'm just gonna say it, wasn't possible. We could not get past this room for the life of us, there was no way, no matter what we tried, there was just so many enemies, it was so overwhelming that we just did not know how anyone would be able to progress through this. So we pulled up the guide to see how Silver did it. It turns out he already had a rocket launcher at this point. We don't know what we did wrong, where we missed the rocket launcher, but as it turned out, earlier on in the level, when we did that despawn and we're running around with no enemies, there's a rocket launcher out there that we were supposed to grab that probably would have saved us a whole lot of trouble considering we can backpack reload it for unlimited ammo through everything that we had just did. So we kind of wasted all of our time by missing that one. But nonetheless, we restarted the level and came back to it a day later. And this time we went through everything once again, but to make sure we actually grabbed the rocket launcher this time around. We were already feeling defeated and exhausted at this point and to have to start fresh, it definitely wasn't the most fun feeling, but we were feeling confident that we were making progress and learning new tricks along the way. We never still felt that feeling of being completely stuck like we did on TNR all those months back. So we made our way through very similarly as we had before. This time we were able to use a rocket launcher as long as we had three UNSC weapons with us to backpack reload because we never wanted to be in a situation where we didn't have ammo. And we continued our push through the indoor sections of the level. We made our way through the long hallway and the bridge section, I decided I was gonna make another run for it. It took me a couple of tries, but I actually did manage to YOLO myself across the bridge again, just punching my way through and hoping that no enemy managed to kill me. And and teleporting Luke across the bridge too. This time around when we were in the flood room we had a couple of ideas from when we were messing around stuck in that room for well over an hour where Luke would run ahead and try to jump up onto this platform and shoot a couple of rounds which would then alert all of the flood to kind of swarm him and stand underneath him. Then I would pop up out of the hallway and just shoot a rocket launcher down there clearing a ton of the enemies along the way. This room wasn't a walk in the park by any means. There was a lot of trial and error pulling off this strategy, but eventually it did work. And when we went into the long hallway, there's actually a bunch of elites in there and they'll push out, but it turned out that the flood that was still alive would go to fight the elites. So we just kind of stood back and let them fight it out. And eventually we pushed forward, killing a couple more flood and things are actually pretty safe. There wasn't too much to worry about. We kind of were aware there would be a flood with a rocket launcher in the next hallway. So we had to be very careful about that, but we managed to kill that flood more or less and Luke picked up a rocket launcher so we then were working with two rocket launchers. We continued along just kind of taking it section by section. We got to the next outdoor bridge. I made another run for it but this time around it did not teleport Luke with me like I had expected. So I kind of just kept pushing and moving as much as I could and Luke and I weren't reunited all the way until we made our way down at the elevator and we were going outside and while we got a checkpoint we were getting absolutely destroyed by this random banshee every time I took one step outside. It was almost funny, but also very frustrating at the same time. Eventually, I was able to kind of maneuver and dodge and Luke tried to distract the Banshee where I could get in the Ghost and just make a drive for it and try to get as far away from the Banshee as possible. I found some med kits and just kind of kept going. I just continued to push ahead until I finally got to the Banshees and Luke teleported on me. And from there, we took the Banshees, flew up to the tower and did a very similar strategy to what we did in the first tower, but we did have to clear out some of the flood along the way, which was a bit of a pain because there's a lot of them. But once we were able to jump into the beam of light and do the little teleport trick, we were on our way out of there with two banshees this time and pushed down into the cave. Now, after we pushed through the cave and all of this that we've already gone through and the hours of playing through this level, this next section 
by far was the worst part of this entire level. It's this area where you open the door, the flood pushes in and you can push them off and then you go inside and essentially there's this long bridge and flood spawns in and attacks you. For the life of us, we could not survive this area. There's just so much going on. We're limited on ammo. We didn't really have a good backpack reload section here. So we were very much just shooting into our own reserves. I burned through all of my shotgun ammo every single time we tried this section and we just still couldn't survive. There's two flood with rocket launchers on the other side that will just blast you. And even if you can kill them, the rest of the flood are incredibly aggressive and you're just really not in good shape. So this one literally just became one of the longest games of trial and error in any lasso challenge we've done where we knew what we had to do, but there was just nothing we could do more than just try to have a successful run at it and just throw ourselves at it over and over and over again. It really was not a good time. We were stuck there, like I said, for the longest time. Actually, I think by the time we did manage to have a successful run clearing this bridge section, I had maybe one or two rocket shots left, but I was fully prepared just to go on without it if I needed to. Though once we got past the hallway, things were starting to look up, though we were very exhausted at this point. So from there, we pushed through the cave, pushing our way up to this giant free-for-all section where the Flood and the Covenant are fighting, and this is not easy either, and we were not looking forward to this but we were just going to try our best and we were going to try to do whatever we could to save what little ammo we had using backpack reloads because we really needed to rely on the few shots that we could use. I threw grenades over at some of the flood that spawn in on the right side and after a while the banshee will fly in and while the banshee killed me multiple multiple times I eventually was able to shoot a shot at the banshee that would then take it out and then either the flood or the covenant would win their fight with each other and push us and we'd have to fight. This was another section that we just had to run over and over again until eventually we had a run where we felt like we were able to kill off some of the enemies with our remaining rocket shots. And at this point, Luke was starting to get a hang of doing the backpack reload himself with the rocket launcher in the same way that I was doing it. So while things were getting very long winded and it was a very long time on two betrayals, we did feel like we were becoming better Halo players this point on. We kind of just inched our way out of the first area and pushed up when we felt like most of the enemies were dead and we tried to get a combo shot with a rocket launcher to kill some enemies. And we got a checkpoint and this checkpoint was kind of the big turning point where we felt like maybe, just maybe, we can actually make it through the level. After everything that I had to learn for Lasso, I was very drained and I thought we probably were going to just wrap it up at that point in the night and maybe just try running the level again another night. But Luke still had a little bit more energy in him so we were going to push on a bit longer. We continued forward and we ended up continuously juggling weapons at the flood drop since we can only use UNSC weapons. And essentially the last thing you have to do is push your way through this giant battlefield where the Flood and the Elites are just fighting it out. There's grunts here, there's jackals there, and everything just wants to kill you at the same time. There's wraiths shooting at you and you have to make your run for a Banshee. And it looked like from what we had seen from guides, you just need one person to get the Banshee and you can pretty much finish up the level on their own. So Luke decided to make a run for the Banshee after we both shot and killed the Wraith. And after a couple of trials and errors where we got killed by the Wraith or we died in some dumb way, Luke grabbed a ghost and just yeeted himself over there, hoping that the other Wraith didn't show up to kill him. And he quickly jumped in a Banshee and started flying all the way back to that final tower. Meanwhile, I was still there just hanging out far enough away, trying to cover Luke when he made his run to the Wraith. And Luke began the process to go into the final tower and fight his way through to activate that last beam. And while I was waiting, there were invisible elites just trying to kill me. And that was terrifying because there was a lot of pressure that we were so close to beating the level I just needed to not die. So I ran and shot and hid the best I could and Luke pushed through to that final beam of light triggering it and finally ending the level which whew, this one was a doozy. But we knew the worst was over at this point and we just had two levels left to go and we could finally put Combat Evolve behind us. We can move on to a completely different type of lasso experience like maybe Reach or Halo ODST or 3 that allows four player co-op. And even if it ends up being challenging or more challenging, we just wanted a change of pace at this point with how long we had been stuck on Combat Evolve. But we still had two levels left to go and the keys was actually a little bit easier 
it was time consuming, but it wasn't too bad. Now there's a trick you could do called the flood bump, which essentially needs you to line yourself up with a flood that resurrects himself and it allows you to bump through the geometry of the level, thus bypassing the largest section of this level. Luke already had done this in our speedrun video, so he knew a bit about the trick, though we tried for like an hour and didn't have any luck. After about an hour, Luke switched to mouse and keyboard and almost immediately was able to pull off the trick, so he was just having some weird jittering going on with his controller. From there, he just had to run through and kill frozen enemies before triggering the cutscene, making sure, you know, the grunts didn't blow up and kill him. And then Luke had to run ahead and teleport me out of where I was over to the cutscene room. And while typically one player can just run to the end of the level at this point, Luke's health and shields weren't really the best due to some chain reaction explosions. So it became my job to try to make a run to the end of the level, which actually only took me a couple of tries. I had to jump off of this platform while everyone was shooting at me and just try to survive and have enough health to survive another drop down a little bit later. And then I dropped down again, had to make sure not to get wrecked by any enemy grab a banshee and stay alive for a couple seconds and keys surprisingly was really easy comparatively to something like two betrayals right before it okay and then we were on to the ma which wasn't as easy as everyone said that it would be who had done the lasso in the past but it also wasn't as hard as some of the harder levels of lasso the first area was pretty simple and straightforward we just kind of shot our way through taking things slow and making sure we weren't gonna get destroyed in the process fighting our way through the cafeteria was a little tricky because there's a ton of enemies and that part's a little bit stressful so we kind of just maneuvered our way around moving fast and trying to get to the hallway where the enemies would stop following us but also sticking together so there weren't some weird loading things happen and when we got to the bridge it was a little bit hard because there's a lot of enemies but at this point it wasn't anything outlandish or beyond anything we had seen so far after triggering the bridge sequence on the way out it was a little bit more intense and we got stuck for quite a while with all the new enemies just kind of jumping into this room and i think i was losing my mind just trying to get past the sets of enemies that spawn in in this area for quite some time until we finally had some good explosions happen or something and we were able to actually progress and hit a checkpoint but getting stuck in this little section was very frustrating and not the most fun experience however at this point i think we were just ready to try to get done with this level and done with ce lasso after everything we had been through so we were really just pushing aggressively and seeing if we could get further and get checkpoints more so than we were trying to take things very very intricately and slowly like we had done on maybe the library or earlier on. It was working for a bit until we got into this ladder room where just stuff is everywhere. There's enemies coming out of the doors, out of the ceiling, they're jumping around, you get up top and things are shooting at you from below. It's a real big mess and this was the choke point of the level. This is where you likely can end up spending a ton of time just holding out and hoping that you can survive. We tried pushing into this little back room and fighting off all of the enemies that came down from the hallway over and over again until we were completely depleted of our ammo and we wouldn't have time to backpack reload with how many enemies are constantly attacking us that we really were just kind of struggling here for a while. The worst part was we would try to make a run for it and just get completely overrun when we were pushing through so we were convinced that that wasn't the right method here. So we would run it again and try to hide and try different strategies to stay alive when actually the best method probably was to try to just make a run for it pushing through and throwing grenades ahead. Which randomly I just tried hoping out of desperation and frustration on how long we had been stuck there that it would work and then randomly I got a checkpoint and no more enemies spawned in from that direction and we were making progress all of a sudden again. So it was really annoying because we had tried it a couple times, had really really, really bad luck and even though it was the right strategy to do, we just hadn't seen it that whole time we were stuck there. So then we pushed up a little bit further, having to take out a few enemies along the way, but nothing that was completely impossible. And we knew of a trick that would come up when we made our way to the final area. So we were feeling optimistic. So when we finally got to the part where we have to go inside and take out the vents, the main strategy is to have one person stay behind right where the loading sequence is. And it actually prevents more enemies from spawning in that area. So you're 
are free to just take your time and take out the vents. We used the armory, grabbed some grenade launchers and quickly got out of there because a bunch of invisible flood spawn in there. And I went in and I shot at all of the vents. I ended up having some trouble at one point, so I had to go back and get more ammo, but that wasn't that big of a deal. And we took out all the vents and made our way over to the elevator where I killed the enemies that came out of that area. And then Luke had to regroup with me and run all the way over to the elevator because the elevator doesn't let you move until both players are there. At this point, we were almost there. We knew all we had left was the warthog run and we thought easy peasy, we can do this. We got this in the bag and I'll be honest, the Warthog run, it wasn't really all that bad, but it definitely still is a challenge. And it took us beginning to end, just learning the Warthog run, about an hour. Now, the explosions at the very beginning can kill you, so you have to be careful of that, because that happened to us multiple times. And then you just begin the driving part, and one person can either shoot or ride passenger. We found that on the times where Luke shot, it was great because less enemies were shooting at us overall, but the times where Luke was in the passenger seat, he ended up not being drained of his health, as often. So we tried both methods out while we were trying to figure out the best method for each section of the driving part. Now you don't have all that much time so it can be pretty stressful especially with how easily you can die and how fast sentinels can just blast you. But essentially in the first room we were just kind of going this kind of left middle route going around the beams and avoiding all of the jumps which is a really good strategy because the jumps end up taking up quite a bit of time. And then in some of the other rooms like this one we had to take the little bridge platforms on the outer sides to get across as fast as possible. When you're going through the curves, you want to try to take every shortcut that you can because you really do end up getting limited on your time. And sometimes these sentinels will just blast you if you don't go through the little shortcut. But yeah, there was a lot of dying and learning the hard way that this wouldn't be a walk in the park. But still, we were getting better. We were making progress as we continued to run the maw over and over again. After several tries, we eventually made it to the pelican crash part and we continued to drive along though we kind of ran into some problems where we just didn't make it but by the next time we made it as far as the pelican crashing part that was our golden ticket run we had been doing so good so far we just continued to push through we did the big jump we were keeping up everything was going pretty smooth except the main problem was that time we had maybe spent a little bit too much time in some parts navigating around some of the obstacles that we were really cutting it close with where we were at. Now Luke had already looked ahead on Silver's guide so he knew what to do that we had to run drop down to lower level run underneath to avoid enemies and then just climb up the stairs and hit the thing. We may have messed up a little bit and completely overshot where the stairs were and had to wrap around and our timer was so close but we managed to jump up and trigger the end cutscene sequence with just seven seconds remaining which was definitely a little too close for comfort but but nonetheless, it counted and we were able to complete Halo Combat Evolved Lasso finally after all of this time. We had so much of a journey through this game. It really was a unique experience and one more chip on our shoulders on our journey to try to get every achievement before Halo Infinite finally releases. But even with this, I'm gonna say this ahead of time because we've already started working on the lassos for some of the other Halo games like Halo Reach for example. And Reach doesn't mess around. Just because you get one more player doesn't mean that it's not this incredible difference difficult campaign. Everyone was saying, yeah, Halo 2 and Combat Evolved, they're the hardest lassos. Any player can play through the Halo Reach and other Halo lasso games, no problem. Uh, you haven't seen us play yet because, uh, we disagree. We've been struggling along a little bit so far with Halo Reach to the point where we may have jumped and worked on some other achievements and taking a break from Halo Reach lasso already. We actually did find Halo 4's lasso to be very interesting because it wasn't on this upper echelon of difficulty and we will recap Halo 4's lasso probably in the video that we end up doing for picking up the last achievements that we have to do for Halo MCC just because comparatively Halo 4 wasn't nearly as much of a journey as what we've seen from the first two Halos or so far what we've seen out of Halo Reach and also a little bit of Halo 3 ODST that we've been struggling with. We got a lot of these different achievements and lasso things currently in progress but you can definitely expect dedicated 
animated videos on this Reach experience, ODST, Halo 3, and then one big video recapping those final achievements that we still need to get if we can actually manage to pull all of these achievements off before Infinite's release. Time is definitely getting down to the wire. We are rapidly running out of time, but maybe with Combat Evolved finally behind us, there's a chance we can pull this off. It's definitely going to be a close one, but we're going to try our best and see what ends up happening. Make sure you are subscribed with notifications on for more videos like this if you like these videos. That's it for today though. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.